Every day, millions of people enjoy the softness and warmth of sheep's wool, a cherished material worldwide. But have you ever wondered how this natural wonder is produced? Discover how the wool is sheared from over 78 million Australian sheep and immerse yourself in the fascinating world of sheep's wool production in factories. Every year, sheep worldwide produce between 2 and 3 million tons of wool. Wool is a raw material with excellent qualities, being one of the most popular and widely used fibers globally. It is known for its softness and curliness. Wool fabric is durable, wrinkle-resistant, maintains its shape well, absorbs moisture, and provides insulation against both cold and heat. That's why wool is ideal for garments such as sweaters and coats. Wool offers natural resistance to soil, and when it gets dirty, it is easy to clean. It has excellent elasticity, resistance to friction, abrasion, and flame retardancy. Sheep's wool has been produced for centuries. Historians believe that people started raising sheep for food and clothing about 10,000 years ago. In 1797, Britain sent 13 sheep to Australia, marking the beginning of what would become the world's largest wool industry. In Australia, sheep shearing has been done since the early 19th century. Back then, everything was done by hand with scissors and the sweat of robust Australians. Today, they have the help of electric machines, and with over 78 million sheep in Australia, they require 350 million kilograms of wool to be sheared each year. It is a long and delicate process that starts with the production of the raw material, which involves breeding and managing the sheep livestock. The process of obtaining sheep's wool continues with shearing the sheep. Often it is the same shepherd who takes care of this task on the farms, where a team of experts is usually dedicated to this work. It is crucial to have knowledge and mastery of the technique to perform the job efficiently and quickly without harming the animal. When all the wool is removed from the sheep's body, a physiological response is activated, increasing their heat production, and the sheep begin to consume more food. This contributes directly to their good nutritional state and well-being. After shearing, the wool goes through a lengthy process to obtain the final product, the wool itself. Shearing is usually done once a year during the warmer months, either in spring or early summer. Shearing can be stressful for the sheep, so the team follows a strict protocol, such as lifting the animals by their legs, not by the wool, and returning them to food and water as soon as possible. On a good day, a regular shearer can shear between 140 and 160 sheep. The average for the best shearers is between 160 and 200 animals. The shearers rely on a padded harness attached to the shed's roof, allowing them to spend most of their two-hour shift semi-inclined. First, they remove the wool from the belly, which is coarser. Then the goal is to shear the rest in one piece. The record time for shearing is 39.3 seconds, although top shearers take less than two minutes per animal. Armed only with an electric clipper, the head has a comb that is 96 millimeters wide, topped with a sharp moving blade. It may resemble a hairdressing tool, but there is a crucial difference. Hairdressers clippers have small built-in motors, but sheep clippers run on powerful electric motors connected by a tube to the handle. This makes the handle lightweight and prevents it from overheating. However, at a rate of 18 sheep per hour, the blades quickly lose their sharpness. The solution is to have a portable blade sharpener and regularly use it. In any case, shearing must be done with care. The goal is always to cut in a single pass, very close to the skin, to remove all the wool in one piece, which is known as a fleece. Each sheep can produce between one and three kilograms of fine wool and two to three kilograms of coarse wool. This depends on the specific characteristics of the fleece. The sheep's fleece has a protective oily layer that contains a substance called lanolin. Once the wool is obtained from the sheep, a process of separation and classification takes place. When the shearer finishes shearing a sheep, the wool pickers come into action. Their job is to collect the wool and prepare it for shipment. The freshly shorn wool usually contains unwanted dead skin and shorter wool fragments. The solution is to place it with the skin side down on a specially designed table with four centimeter wide slats. The spacing between the slats allows most of the waste to fall to the floor. However, the edges of the wool still contain dirt and sweat. Therefore, before the wool leaves the table, specialists subject it to a cleaning process to remove the outer edges. Subsequently, the wool is sorted according to its color. The quality of the wool is mainly determined by the fineness of the fibers. Finer and softer fibers usually have superior quality and are used for high-end products such as merino wool garments. Thicker fibers may be used for more rustic or industrial purposes, such as carpet manufacturing. After the sorting process, the wool may contain dirt, natural oils, and other contaminants that need to be removed to obtain clean and ready-to-process wool. 
Wool washing is performed to clean the fibers and improve their quality. Once washed, the fluffy skins are compressed into bales weighing up to 200 kilograms using a giant press. Meanwhile, the freshly sheared flock returns to the pastures, six kilograms lighter and without their wool, ready to withstand another 12 months. The wool arrives at the factory in compressed bales, and the factories receive around 8,000 kilograms of freshly shorn wool from around the world daily. The first thing the factories do with a batch of fresh wool is to dye it in one of the thousands of colors they use in their fabrics. Workers load 150 kilograms of fleece into a 1.5 meter steel basket, and a hydraulic press supplies pressure and water to compact it. Compacting the wool allows them to dye more quantity at once and preserve resources. A quick centrifuge cycle removes most of the water, but the freshly dyed wool is still quite moist, so it moves to the dryer. The dryer is like a giant microwave used to remove the remaining moisture from the wool. As the wool heats up in the microwave, the water evaporates and is sucked out by an internal vacuum system. At this stage, the wool is like hair that has never been brushed before. Before it becomes threads, it needs to be untangled. This happens in the carding machine. The wool passes through over 100 different sized rollers that essentially brush the fibers. Each of the carding machine's rollers is covered with thousands of tiny metal wires. Carding is a process where the wool is combed to align the fibers and remove any tangles or unwanted materials. The goal of carding is to prepare the wool for the next step, which is spinning. These wires trap the wool and make it pass through the machine, brushing the fibers in a uniform direction like a giant brush. The next stage in obtaining wool is spinning. At this point, the goal is to shape the fibers into yarn. The wool undergoes a process of twisting until it transforms into a yarn with the desired thickness and appropriate strength. As the strands pass through the machine, a spindle twists each strand at least four times per inch. The more it is twisted, the stronger the yarn. The twisted yarn is wound onto reels called bobbins. Each bobbin is actually a long piece of twisted yarn. The yarn is now ready to be woven, and it all starts in the weaving room. Wool weaving essentially consists of two parts, a vertical thread called warp and a horizontal thread called weft. The intersection of the warp and weft provides the basic pattern of the fabric. Once the wool textile products have been manufactured, they are prepared and packaged for transportation and distribution. If you want to know how aluminum foil is made, you can find the link in the description and the first comment. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Share it with someone who might be interested, and subscribe to this channel by enabling notifications to continue learning. Thanks for watching.